Welcome back everybody to another Dark Arts Coffee YouTube video. I'm Brad Morrison. I'm Jamie. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, you might be used to seeing uh, brew guides on here. Um, we're not going to do a brew guide today, are we? No, I don't know. We've, we've done a few. The Thank channel you. was never meant to just be about brew guides. We wanted to do a lot of stuff that due to a global pandemic we weren't able to do. <laughs> Uh, but now we're going to try and at least start doing something different. Yeah, yeah. So today what we're going to do is we're actually going to talk about the history of the company, um, how we got started, how me and Jamie met, how um, me, Jamie and Colin met. Colin. Can we do that? Can we put a picture of Colin on the screen? Look, there's a picture of Colin. There he is. <laughs> Without further ado, roll intro. <laughs> Right, so Dark Arts Coffee. Um, I moved here from Melbourne. I'd been living in Melbourne for a number of years before I moved here. I used to work in banks and real boring shit like that. It was, it was kind of one of those things, you kind of, you start a job and then you end up in an industry and then down the line you end up uh, working in credit management, calling people up that owe money to banks for mortgages. Yeah, so I fucking, I hated that. Um, and I actually started, um, I'd been drawing my entire life. But, um, so I had doing a little bit of illustration work here and there, um, and I started um, doing street art, weirdly, because... <laughs> Is this still when you were like rollerblading? <laughs> yes, I was rollerblading around Melbourne doing street art. <laughs> Basically, I was, I was working in a bank. I started actually working there at the start of the financial crisis. It exploded in Australia. Like it was, our team went from like 10 to 40 people calling people up who owed money to the banks and couldn't pay their mortgages. So it was just the most depressing shit to find yourself in. Wow, yeah. I just, threw, I packed it in. I threw, threw, threw that job away, even though I was getting paid more money than I still <laughs> today. And um, yeah, I started um, an art career and I started doing murals and and stuff like that. It was, it was, it was, it was fun. Yeah. I mean, in Melbourne at the time, and yeah. I think even still now, like the street art and the graffiti scene is phenomenal. I would kind of had started making a name for myself there, and, and um, I kind of got to a point where I was like, well, I should really move to a much bigger place because um, I'm putting in all this work. Um, I might as well be in a bigger city. So I moved to London, um, thinking that that's what I wanted to do. It was pretty quick after that I arrived here that I realised that the reason why I liked being involved in the street art community was the community in Melbourne. Um, it's just filled with just amazing people, and I didn't find it here. Um, I know it does exist, but it just it didn't come I didn't come across it that quickly. So I remember going to a couple of like shows, and yeah, you, you know what it's like when you turn up somewhere. It's like going to a new school. I don't know if you would... Did you, yeah, I've been to school a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, um, like you turn up, you're just like, oh, hi, <laughs> I'm Brad, <laughs> I do street art. <laughs> what was that? Who's your tag? Drab. Drab is not a kind of drab. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I kind of didn't really want to do that anymore, and I don't know why, it just, I fell out of love with it quite quickly. Um, and I'd... I walked into um, a cafe down in Shoreditch, nude espresso, and ran into an old friend of mine from high school, um, Jess Green, um, said I needed to find a job, um, and she took me up the road to a cafe on Brick Lane. It was kind of one of those things where, I don't know, have you ever like completely fluked an interview? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they needed someone. And she kind of was like, all right, well, jump on the machine, make a coffee. I'd only made coffee one time before at this really shitty pub. I went in there, made a coffee, completely fluked it. Somehow managed to just 
pour like a perfect heart. Um, but yeah, I, I got the job on the spot. Um, and then I think like the next couple of shifts I had at that place, they realized pretty quickly I had no idea what I was doing and I sucked miserably. The girl who uh, interviewed me was fucking really pissed off about hiring me because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, is, that, um, is that Talia? Yeah. That um, girl who hired me ended up becoming my wife <laughs> and the mother of our child. <laughs> so, you know, it's... Yeah. When's she going to realize you flicked that one too? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like bullshitting my way through an interview and like pouring a perfect heart gave me my heart. <laughs> Oh my God. Boom. <laughs> I worked for that place um, for about a year. Um, I think like a lot of people, once they, once they enter the industry, especially from, and from the barista level, you get really, really into being a barista. You get into like the managing of the tools, the, the grinders, the machines, dialing in, all that kind of stuff. So I kind of just geeked out massively. And the owner of, of, those, of those shops, he... Um, I was like, oh shit, it's like a guy who like really, really interested. So he actually put me in charge of the quality control across the three shops after like not that long, because I, you know, I was doing it a lot and the shops were quite busy. Like it was on Brick Lane. I don't know if any of you guys have been down to Brick Lane on a Sunday, the Brick Lane market. Yeah. It's, it's it's insane. You're doing you're doing three, four hundred coffees in a day. But quite quickly after working there, I started realizing that the the coffee was always a bit shit. And like we try and figure out like is it the grinder, is it the machine, we get service, da da da. And we realized it wasn't. It, it, the problem was the coffee we were using. Um, and that's when I, um, I, I said to the owner, I was like, look, I need to go out and see this roaster. And yeah, I jumped on a train and I went out to fucking where it was, it was like Bristol Way. On my way out there, I was like on the train, I had my laptop, I spent the hour or two hours on the way out there just trying to learn about what what I was going to see like, like what is it, what's coffee roasting like what's the machinery what's the what's out there when I arrived I mean I realized from that small amount of information I'd absorbed on the way out there that I could do it better than this guy just based on the equipment that he was using like no temperature probes everything by iron smell at the start I was like oh man this guy's got to be some wizard like he has to know what he's doing and he was like nah man like I was packing the bags and I've been roasting it now for half a year and I was like well did you learn he was like nah nah it's like you just once it kind of gets to the first crack you just wait like a couple of minutes or whatever and then you just drop it <laughs> <laughs> so on the way back I kind of re- I was like I was just like absorbing like everything that I'd just sort of seen and then I sort of started thinking like, well, if I think I can do it better than this guy, like, is it possible like that maybe there's something here for me? I started looking at machinery and I, start, and I started running through the math. Right. Um, and the guy I worked for, he had a coffee shop with like, you know, they were doing like 250 kilos a week. I basically said to him, I said, look, if I can set this up, would you buy the coffee from me and not from her? And he, all he said was, as long as it's not more expensive, I'll buy it. And by this point, like I'd, I'd looked at what was going on in the coffee industry. I'd, I'd started seeing that there was definitely in, um, room for a slightly more alternative um, brand. There was the birth of Dark Arts Coffee. Um, oh, the owner of the shop, he, like, he'd sort of said that he will give me the money. And then, like, it, we'll kind of set it up together. Okay. Um, but then, just time kind of kept going on, and time kept kept going on, and then, like another another year, like peeled off. There was a point there where it definitely felt like it wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to get the money. I couldn't. I couldn't find the money to set it up. Yeah. Um, it didn't seem like the owner of that show shops was going to give me any money. So, I kind of given up. Um, and that's when something kind of interesting happened. We went out to this motorbike festival. It's called the Trip Out. We were just hanging out, um, getting drunk. To be honest, I actually went up with three dudes who were straight edge, pretty much. And then I went out and got shit-faced the first <laughs> night. And I was, I was like, on the second day, uh, one of the guys had a little stall, and I was like, I was just like lying down on the ground, just so hungover. Um, and one of them said, oh, Colin's coming. And I was like, who the fuck's Colin? Like, <laughs> why do you say it like that? And he was like, no, no, Colin's coming. He's, he's, Colin's the man. 
I, to be honest, I was a little bit like bummed out because like these are like new people I was hanging out with. They didn't drink. I like drinking. And they were all excited about someone new coming. Like, yeah, I was like, oh, it's going to be another fucking like straightish dude. So, <laughs> 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 um, and then like it, it was, it was amazing. It was like over the sort of the grassy paddock, just you just saw this like moving figure. <laughs> it was kind of going. Like, admittedly, it, it was like this, and it was just this lanky dude with like a a box of beers under one arm, and then like a, a, a bottle of like whiskey, I think it was. You know, and he was just like, bah, 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 right. bah, bah, bah. <laughs> and he, and he kind of came up, and then they're like, oh, it's Colin. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> thank God for Colin. <laughs> so yeah, Colin turned up, we got real drunk, uh, and we had a really good time. Somewhere in amongst all of the like nighttime drinking, yep. we, I was like talking about this idea I had and you know what I wanted to do with it and this branding idea and and he kind of he sounded he was like ah oh, look you know if you're ever interested in actually doing that you know I I work in advertising like I've been saving um, to buy a house but this sounds kind of cool and you know I thought I thought it was just that normal chat from the drinking um, yeah. <clears throat> but it turns out it wasn't he hit me up like a week later, I was like, hey, you want to sit down and talk about that idea? Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, man. Like, especially at the time, because I'd like, I'd fucking given up. So I sat down with Colin and um, I went through all the figures because I had them all at the time and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, long story short, he was like, yeah, let's do it. So then it was just you two, did you still work with the cafe? Yeah, there was or... like, there was a brief moment there where we kind of, the owner of the cafe is still, like, he was, he still was true to his word. Um, uh, he took the coffee, which was amazing. Uh, he worked with us for like a little bit, um, and we kind of got set up and started running. Um, we, we ran it like a like almost like contract roasting, and then we opened a we opened a little cafe, and then just above London Fields there, um, that was sort of oh like, yeah that place <clears throat> yeah you remember that mm -hmm. it was like this little motorcycle shop uh, just above London Fields. I don't know if any of you guys remember that. It's called Bolt. We had like a little residency there. Um, Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Um, Does it always? No. Um, two quite big egos under one roof. We um, <laughs> decided to part Can't ways. I imagine what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyone knows the story knows the story. Uh, <laughs> that's actually. That's where we met as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, where, that's where we met. Just prior to that, you had been working at Goodhood for a little bit. Yeah. And there used to be a cafe in there. Yeah. yeah. And me and Talia had gone in there. You, you were using like a certain grinder. Yeah. And I just asked you about it, like across the counter. I was like, oh, what's that? And you were like, bro, <laughs> come round. And you like, well, come round. You like, talk me through everything you were doing. And I think like from that moment, like Talia was just like, that dude needs to work. Like needs to be a part of Dark Arts Coffee. 